Hello, second and third grade students. So as you already know, uh, Ms. Madsen is going to be doing your social studies lessons for first quarter. And then I will be doing the science lessons for both second and third grade. So our first lesson of this quarter is going to be on states of matter. So in this lesson, we're going to be looking at the differences between solids, liquids, and gases. So first off, let's talk about states of matter. So this is going to be an important term that we're going to be seeing throughout this presentation. So states of matter is one of the forms that matter takes such as a solid, a liquid, or a gas. So matter is anything that we have here on our planet. So everything that we have that we can see or not see is matter, and it's going to be made up of a solid, a liquid, or a gas. All right, so first off, let's look at solids. So let's look at motion of particles. So we see the green particles down at the bottom. So how would you describe the movement of these particles? Do you think they're moving fast? Do you think they're moving slow? Do you think it's kind of in between a little bit? So these particles vibrate in place and are tightly packed. So then how would you describe the speed of these particles? Would you say that they're fast? Would you say that they're slow? Or would you say it's kind of in between? So I would say that these are slow. So in a solid, the particles vibrate in place and are tightly packed, and they move at a slow pace. So we can look at these three properties to figure out which state of matter an object is. So first off is shape. Does it have a definite shape? So when we look at like a chair, no matter what it's made out of, just by looking at that shape, we can know that it's a chair no matter what. Next is mass. Does it have a definite amount of matter? And then lastly is a volume. So does it take up a definite amount of space in an area? So here's some examples of solids. So these are things that we can pick up, we can touch, we can sit on, we can move around. So these are just a few examples that we see in our everyday lives. And now here's some examples of liquids that we see in our life. Now there's three of them on here that we could actually say have more than one type of matter to it. So for example, we have the laundry detergent. So the container is a solid, but the detergent inside is a liquid. And the same goes for the soda bottle. The outside is a solid. We can pick it up. We can touch it. But the soda that's inside that we drink is actually a liquid. And then lastly, the glass of orange juice. So again, the glass is a solid. We can pick it up. We can put it to our mouth so that we can drink the liquid orange juice that is inside. All right, now let's look at gases. So this time, we're looking at the pink dots as the particles. So how would you describe the movement of these particles? Does this look like it's a lot different from the solid ones that we looked at? I would definitely say so. So I would say that on this one, the particles are constantly expanding and they are far apart. And now let's look at the speed of the particles. So how do you think that you could describe the speed of the particles here on the screen? Do you think it's completely opposite of the solid? Do you think that it's moving a lot faster? Because I totally agree. So on this one, I would say that we could describe the speed of these particles as being fast. 
So a gas will spread out to fill all the space in whatever container it is in. So in this example, we have the hot air balloon, and we know that hot air balloons rise because of the hot air that is trapped inside. So this, in this example, the gas will spread out as far as the hot air balloon is expanded. It won't go past it, and it won't be any smaller than what the size of the container is. So if the gas is unconfined, the gases will spread out as far as they can. So in this example, these gases from this factory, there is no confined space. It's just going out into the air. So since it's not just confined to a small area, these gases will just keep moving and moving and moving and going as far out as they can. So again, here's some examples of gases. So we talked about the hot air balloon, which was a confined space, and then the gases coming from this factory, which was unconfined. Another example would be scuba divers. So when they breathe, when they breathe here, they are breathing out oxygen, which is a type of gas. Maybe in your house you have a gas top stove. This is something that I have in my apartment. And here we can even see that the color of this gas is blue. And one other one that you might be really familiar with, you have probably seen these at school many times, would be a pressurized gas that's inside of a fire extinguisher. All right, so let's review here real quick. So we had solid, which is tightly packed. So solids are a state of matter where the particles only vibrate and cannot move from their position. And then we had the liquids, which are closely packed. So liquids are a state of matter where the particles move enough to slide past each other. All right, so now we're going to look at an example here online real quick. So here we have, we're going to use oxygen molecules. So right now it's kind of right in the middle, so it's not super cold and it's not super hot. So right now we're going to be looking at the solid. So remember with the solid, the particles are going to stay very close to each other and they're not going to move very much. Now let's look at what happens when it turns into a liquid. So now we start to see the particles start to move a little bit faster and they start to move away from each other a little bit more. And then lastly, with the gas we see a big difference. So they start to move a lot faster, and now they're taking up the whole space of the container that they're in. So remember, when it's in a confined area, it won't leave this area, but it will try to take up the whole space here. So let's go back to the solid. And now let's see what happens when we add some heat to it. So what do we see happening here? So it looks like they're starting to move away from each other and they're starting to move at a lot faster pace. So now let's do the opposite. Let's add, or let's make it as cold as we can. So before they were moving around a lot and now as the temperature is dropping what do we see start to happen? So we see that they start to go back down to the bottom of the container. They're not moving a whole lot. And they have come back and they aren't, and now they're starting to come back to each other. All right, so lastly, let's also look at 
the gas. So remember with the gas, like we just saw in the video, they are loosely packed particles. And this is a state of matter where the particles bounce freely and rapidly. All right, so let's just do a quick review here as we wrap up our lesson for today. So with a solid, do we have a definite shape? Yes, we do. How about in a liquid? No, we do not. And lastly, on the gas? No, we do not. So now, definite mass. So does it have some weight to it? With a solid? Yes. When we pick up something, it might be very light or it might be very heavy. With a liquid? Yes. Liquids can still weigh something. And then lastly, with a gas, do we think that a gas has some weight to it? Yes, it actually does. That one's kind of a tricky one because we think, like the air, like we can't really see the air in the, around us, but it still does have mass to it. And then lastly, definite volume. So does it take up space? With a solid, yes. What do we think for a liquid? Do we think that a liquid can take up space? Yes, liquids do take up space. And then lastly, with a gas, no. So with the gas, it does not have a definite volume. So for a solid, solids will always have a definite shape, mass, and volume. All right, and then let's just go over the motion and speed of each of these phases. So with a solid, remember that the particles vibrate in place and are very tightly packed together. And then remember when they're tightly packed together, that means that the speed, oh, sorry, let's, let's go on to the liquid first. So for the motion of particles with the liquid, so the particles are close, but they can still slide past one another. So they start to speed up a little bit more, start to move around a little bit more than the solid does. And then lastly with the gas, that remember that's the one where they are moving around very fast. So the particles are constantly expanding to the container that they are in. All right, so now let's move on to speed of particles. So remember with the solids, since they're tightly packed together and they're not moving a whole lot, the speed of the particles is going to be slow. And then remember with the liquid, it's going to be kind of medium. And then with the gas, it's going to be very fast as they are expanding and moving around the container that they are in. So if we say solid, liquid, gas, we can remember it as slow, medium, and fast in that order. All right, and that is our lesson for today.